everyone welcome to solar integrations um, this will be my 23rd video so um, I hope I'm getting better at it um, in today's video I'm going to be covering an automation to decide whether to switch my pool pump on in the morning or not I'm going to be using the Sonoff smart switches which um, I haven't had in any of my videos before along with the Solcast um, solar forecaster to forecast what my production is going to be for the day and then it will decide based on um, settings that I put into it whether to switch the pool pump on for the day or not um, I find this automation very very useful um, the pool is something which doesn't need to be switched on every day and um, if you've got a not great uh, solar forecast for the day then um, you know, you can save yourself 8, 10 kilowatt hours of power just by not switching it on. It can be the difference between having a flat battery and not. So um, I hope you find it useful. If you've got any comments or uh, anything on the video, please let me know in the comment section. And um, please, if you do find it useful, remember to like and subscribe. And um, if you've got any other requests, any other videos or anything like that you'd like to see, please let me know. And um, I'll see you after the break. Uh, the one thing um, I have included an automation for the Solcast APIs. Um, they have limited the number of API calls you can make um, to their servers. So I've included a uh, automation on uh, that as well. Um, so uh, uh, you will find that in the video as well. So uh, we will see you after the break. Thanks a lot. Uh, firstly, one thing you don't need is you don't need to have an integration between your inverter and home assistant for this to work. Um, so if you just want to get started with home assistant and try it out and um, you know, this is a, a great opportunity to do that without going through uh, connecting up your inverter to home assistant. Okay, so for the installation we're going to need to use the Solcast integration. Um, if you don't have it installed, I will link to a video uh, where we previously installed Solcast. Um, you can use the uh, built-in solar forecasting in Home Assistant, but uh, my experience, I've found Solcast to be better. It um, handles up to two strings of panels and um, it gives longer range uh, forecasts as well, which can be pretty handy. So the one thing we're going to need to do before we get going on this is to create a secondary home assistant profile in EWE link. Um, the reason we want to do this is because the EWE link cloud doesn't like multiple um, simultaneous uh, logins. So if your phone and your home assistant try to log into the profile at the same time, it's going to kick one of them off, which obviously causes issues. The way to get around this is we create a secondary profile. So you'll go into um, your, um, your EWE link app on your phone, log out of it, and then create a new home assistant profile. And then once you've done that, if you go into your devices, and um, let's just have a look here. Um, you, if you go into your devices and you then um, go down to share, you can share your uh, that device with um, with multiple uh, profiles and give it control over those profiles. And then when we uh, link up our integration in Home Assistant, we will link up using um, that profile instead of the profile which is active on your phone. So I hope that's, uh, that's clear. It's pretty easy to do. If you've got any issues, just let me know. We're also going to be using the um, Sonoff LAN uh, integration from Alex IT. Um, it's a Sonoff integration that allows for access to the local um, uh, over the network rather than via the cloud. Um, there is a built-in integration in Home Assistant for uh, Sonoff switches, but it all goes via the cloud. So I like this. I like the Sonoff LAN version because of the local access, and um, 
if your network, if your internet connection goes down for some reason, um, you're not going to lose um, lose connection to your Sonoffs. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's very stable. Um, there's a lot of support on it, and um, he's got some very good information on the power reporting. If you want to do total power usage, um, just check out the, out the GitHub page. I'll put a, a link to it, and um, it's a great integration for controlling Sonoff switches. The other big option for your smart switch is to use a two-year switch. Um, the big ones locally in South Africa are the astute switches. Um, they like you to use the CBI platform, but um, I've done a previous video with the Giza installation. So if you want to use that um, that that uh, integration, then I'm just going to put a link through to the Giza installation and you can just use it there. Um, there are two integrations that I know of. The one is uh, local Tuya and the other one is Tuya local. Um, I use the local Tuya integration. If anyone's got any comments about them, uh, then that would be great in the video comments. Um, but either will work and um, I uh, personally, I prefer the Sonoffs, but um, both of them will work without any issues. So the home, the installation is pretty easy. We're going to be using the Home Assistant Community Store. Um, if you don't have it installed, I'll include a link to a video where I did the installation of that. Otherwise, um, YouTube videos on installing home assistant store are there's loads of them so i'm not going to go over that um the integration going to integrations explore and download repositories you're going to search for um sonoff and you will find sonoff lan like that over there um you click on download download the latest version Okay, once that has installed, we're going to go um, to settings, integrations. Um, I think we actually need to restart first. Uh, sorry, restart Home Assistant, restart, restart. Okay, we just wait for that to restart. Okay, go to your integrations, add an integration, Sonoff, um, it picks it up like this over here, it doesn't say Sonoff LAN in it. What you then want to do is use your, um, your profile that you've created for your, um, for your home assistant um, and you want to do that so as so that you're not going to be disconnecting your phone every time you use it. Um, once, it's, once it's installed, you will see uh, where it is over there. It's going to pick up all my devices. You can see I use quite a few of them. And um, what it will then do, um, for this one we want our pool pump, which is that one over there. I click on that and I want to add that to my dashboard to my default dashboard, yes. And I want to add that on as well. That's all the power that I'm drawing and everything. And um, that is pretty much it. You'll see I've now got that over there. If I want to turn it on manually, I can click on it um, over there to turn it on and you'll see um, there my current goes up and the amount of power that I'm drawing goes up. Um, you can also see what this entity is called if you click on it over there like that. There's the name over there. Okay, um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go and do the automation. Okay, so for the automation, what we're going to be doing is at um, 8 o'clock in the morning, we are going to go and check our um, the forecast for today. To see what it is um, we're then going to set a threshold um, over which if it's above that amount then go turn the pool on um, 
So I will include the YAML code that I use. You're going to need to customize it a little bit, but um, it should make everything a, a lot easier. So um, settings, automations, we're going to create an automation, uh, create a new automation. And then up here, we're going to edit it in the YAML code. And then what we're going to do is just paste in the YAML code that I've, that I've uh, given over there. And if we save that, we call it uh, solar pool production pool. Um, let's rename that. Okay. If we go back here now and we click on it over here, we can see what all these values are in the little uh, GUI, which makes it quite uh, a bit easier to understand. So um, if I go back to this overview, we can see the sensor that I want to have a look at is... Um, the forecast for today, which is that one over there. So I can check that value. That's the sensor sol uh, PV forecast to, for today. I want to check over here. Yes, that is, um, that's that value over there. Make sure that it's the right one. Okay. And um, I'm going to check that if that value is above 72, I can change that. I make quite a lot of power, but um, you're going to be able to adjust that. Now, you need to bear in mind that your pool will use about, uh, depending on how long you run it for and how big your pump is, if you've got a smart switch on there, you'll be able to see what your, what your normal usage is. But you're going to be able to save that by, um, just by switching it off. So um, I've got it above 72 kilowatt hours a day, turn the pool pump on, and um, I switch my pool pump off automatically at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So... I set that in the app on my phone. Okay, so for the Solcast updates, um, they limit it to, I think it's 12 a day. So I'm just going to create an automation to uh, poll the, uh, the Solcast server for the updates. So into automations again, create a new automation. I'll do the same thing again. I'll post the uh, YAML code for you guys so that you can use it. Um, that's my, uh, my update. There you can see it's going to um, at 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. So it's going to pull those forecasts the whole day. And um, that's the entity that it's going to post for the updates. Um, what I want to do is this thing is scheduled for 8 o'clock. So I'm um, to check. So I'm actually just going to change this to just um, poll for the update just a little bit earlier, five minutes earlier, so we get a nice fresh update before we turn the pool on. And I'm going to save that and um, update solar cost, solar forecast. Let's just save that. And then what we can do is if we have a look over here the current um, forecasts are uh, over there so i'm just going to try um running this let's run this um okay and there we can see that's that's not updated um we now have um, we've used one API install, we've one, used one API query, and we've got 10 left. Uh, we've got 10 in total. That's because I'm on the free, on the free setup. Um, if I post it again, you'll see uh, that's now gone to two. So we've now got eight left. So you just have to be careful about how many of these API calls you're making. Um, if you don't have this uh, automation, and you haven't turned off the automatic updates in uh, Solcast, then you find that it uses them up pretty quickly. 
Um, and that is about it for the sole cost um, automation. So um, I hope you guys find it useful. As I said, it's probably one of my um, one of the one of the automations which I use the most. Um, it runs every day and it works really really nicely. So um, I hope you guys found the the video useful. If you did and you like this type of content. Um, Please remember to subscribe to my channel and like my videos. It does help them get further out there to a wider audience. And um, if you've got any suggestions or any queries or you'd like to see any other automations or any other questions on Home Assistant, please let me know in comments. I always uh, appreciate the feedback. So thanks, guys, and we will see you next time.